Hello, this is Achilles Zenatopoulos, and I will present you uh, two acceleration demos together with some introductory slides that describe the work done in the project with respect to the seamless exploitation of hardware acceleration resources in the highly heterogeneous edge. This is an overview of the Connect Compute platform, as was also previously demonstrated by other partners. In the next slides, we will see how various components described in the Work Package 4 presentation were successfully combined and integrated. In this presentation, we focus on the hardware acceleration enabled MEC systems like the one highlighted. In this, during the project, we have worked on supporting several flavors of heterogeneity, such as hardware accelerators or different CPU architectures, while also making prompt decisions regarding placement or migration. Those tasks are automated and transparent to the users who are, un who are unburdened from the complexity of resource provisioning. The ICCS testbed is divided in the near and the far edge devices. For the former, we employ three high-end Intel Xeon servers and VM machines that simulate common multi-tenant environments. Additionally, those VMs are equipped with high-end accelerators, such as data center GPUs and FPGAs. Regarding the far edge, we employ power-constrained ARM-based devices, such as NVIDIA Jetson AGX and system-on-chip FPGAs. We have added an extra hope in the interface that connects the near to the far edge to emulate the added network latency due to proximity. Finally, all the devices were part of a Kubernetes cluster that together with the AI at edge components, such as the IARM, the MEO, etc., constituted the ICCS MEC system. As it was reported, in the deliverable 4.2 in the acceleration validation in section 3, we used the testbed to experiment and uh, evaluated the performance of a big variety of AI models and hardware devices with the results included in the table. We used AIFs with different AI models built with binaries for many different heterogeneous platforms, including hardware accelerators, while we also varied the configuration knobs to further increase the solution space for AIFs with the same functional requirements. The table aggregated several tests. In the, uh, however, in, in the following videos, we will discuss two representative examples. Regarding device acceleration factors, shown in the last column of the table, the gain lies in the border area of 10 times for latency and up to 100 times for throughput when isolating the far edge case, uh, with accelerators becoming in even more important at the far end. But which were the tools to support the testbed orchestration and metrics collection for those AIFs? We present the AI at edge tool flow that facilitates AIF development, deployment, and runtime management on highly heterogeneous MEC systems. And now let's have a brief overview of the AIF lifecycle in ICS in the MEC system. First of all, in AI at Edge, we facilitate the development and, and deployment of AIFs by introducing the AIF generator, namely the F2IF. The user provides a model in TensorFlow, and our tool generates a plethora of model variants that are stored in the AIF catalog in the form of deployment ready help chats. The model variants span from different hardware platforms to different AI frameworks. In this slide, you can see how the F2IF automates the process of AIF generation while allowing the users to customize the models with their application-specific data and needs. Additionally, tf 2 if uses platform-optimized AI frameworks in order to improve the performance compared to the native, widely used TensorFlow models. At the bottom left, we can see that thanks to these optimizations, most of the models uh, and platforms combinations experience marginal improvement in latency. Now moving to the development, to the deployment phase, the user first provides the AIF descriptor. Then the MEO forwards the required parts to IARM, which decides the AIF placement. Let's take a closer look to IARM. Uh, IARM receives a part of the AIF descriptor from MEO via REST API. Then it considers first the user requirements, for example, latency or throughput, uh, since we are uh, talking about latency sensitive AI inference. Second, the versions included in the AIF descriptor. And third, the current hardware availability and state of the cluster 
leveraging the monitoring scheme of AIF and system level metrics. And then leveraging the accumulated knowledge about the performance of the different versions, it decides the placement or the migration of the AIF. Uh, the AI arm uh, uses metrics from the Connect Compute Platform um, monitors and the AIF descriptor as inputs. Then using internal mechanisms, it needs to make the decision for AIF placement or migration. As shown, IARM is a structure that will potentially include ML or reinforcement learning. For example, the reinforcement learning will be used more for the vertical and horizontal scaling of the CPU versions, while the ML combined with accumulated knowledge will drive the decision making about which version should be used. After all, the critical part is the red box, which depends on the expert's knowledge. The output of the IARM is a JSON file, which is sent through a REST API in response to the MIO. Now let's describe the first demo with title Leveraging Hardware Acceleration Capabilities in CCP with IARM. On the right side of the slide, you can see the, the, the video screen, which is split into, into several windows to showcase the interoperab interoperability between the different components of the AI Attached MEC system. The steps followed in this demo are the following. First, the client uh, number one arrives and provides an AIF descriptor for image classification. But only the CPU is available since hardware accelerators are occupied by other workloads. After a while, client number one finishes execution and leaves. Next, the hardware, the hardware acceleration resources are freed. Then client number two arrives and requests for the image classification AIF. This time both FPGA and GPU are available. So IARM uh, will select GPU for improved performance. And we achieve a 15 times decreased execution time with this decision. And now let's uh, proceed to the first video. So on the top left of the screen, we can see the application deployment script. On the top right, there is a terminal of the client that requests the deployed services. On the bottom left, there are the deployed containers on the Kubernetes cluster of the ICCS MEX system, while on the bottom right, we can see the logs of the IARM and the MIO. Start. So we first deploy two AIFs that occupy the hardware, the hardware acceleration resources. We can see the container starting on the bottom left. After a while, uh, client number one arrives and the procedure for the deployment of an image classification AIF starts. We can first see the logs of the IARM and then the logs of NEO, which communicate. As we can see, the CPU version is selected and deployed as a container in Kubernetes. Now the client will start requesting the service with a batch of 1,000 images to be classified. We can see at the top right the logs of the requests and the CPU version will achieve 21.9 seconds of execution time on average for each request. After a while, a client number one finishes and the CPU AIF gets deleted. Then the two containers that occupy the CPU and FPGA are removed and the resources are deallocated. After a while, a new client will arrive. And then the request for the deployment for the image classification AIF is again handled by the IR. IR sort the versions, and this time including the hardware, the hardware accelerated ones. As we can see, the MIO selected the GPU version, which was at the top of the list. And the AIF container gets deployed on the Kubernetes cluster, and after it gets ready, uh, client number two will start requesting the image classification again. So this time, the execution latency will be only 1.5 seconds, which is 15 times less than before.
And finally, client to finish execution. The GPU version is deleted as well. And with this, we have reached the end of the first demo. Continue with the slides. Okay, now uh, going towards to the second demo. Before the video, I would like to describe very briefly the monitoring scheme which will be used uh, in the second scenario. It spans to, to multiple tires from the node to MEC and to the NSAP level. Starting from the node level, um, AIF level and system level metrics are extracted in fine granularity to support timely response for the resource management components. Those metrics are then aggregated as they are forwarded to the upper layers because firstly, the level of granularity is not needed there. And secondly, to avoid high data volumes overhead. We use open source frameworks like Prometheus and Thanos, as well as custom node exporters for the accelerators. Going back to the tool flow overview, now, during the runtime phase, uh, IAM continues monitoring the cluster resources. At the same time, it uses an API provided by MEO to realize uh, the currently used node for the request AIFs. If one resource that better serves the user's needs or increases the cluster's overall efficiency gets freed, IAM will trigger a, a migration request towards the MEO. Now, regarding the second demo, uh, the demonstrated windows uh, won't change. This time, there is a single user that arrives and only the CPU version is available. Therefore, the AIF is deployed in CPU. However, after a while, as more and more powerful resources become available, the service is automatically and transparently migrated. Meanwhile, the user keeps requesting the service endpoint without any disruption. Let's go to the second video. So um, the terminal windows are split similarly to, to the previous video. So as before, we deploy the two containers that occupy the hardware acceleration resources, namely the, the GPU and the FPGA. After a while, the client uh, will arrive, and uh, this time an image se semantic segmentation AIF deployment is forwarded to the AI arm to be handled. We will see the logs of the AI arm on the bottom right with only the CPU version being available. The, sele the selection is forwarded to MEO, which finally deploys the AIF through Kubernetes as shown. The client uh, on the top right we then start requesting the image segmentation AIF. And the average end to end latency this time is 750 milliseconds on a pre warm server. Now let's assume that suddenly the AIF occupying the FPGA gets deleted and the resource gets freed. We can see the old container being terminated while the system state gets updated. So now I am leveraging the continuous monitoring that detects the unexploited resource of the FPGA. Uh, additionally, communicating with MEO and considering the versions included in the, in the AIF descriptor of the user will trigger migration of the, A, of the AIF to FPGA for more efficient execution. The MEO subsequently executes the migration and we can see the two versions changing on the bottom left. Everything happens completely transparent to the user. The client without, without, without any service disruption continues requesting for the AIF service at the same endpoint. And now we can see that the average end to end latency of the warm containers is 70 milliseconds, almost 11 times faster than before. So, after a while, the container that was previously occupying the GPU will get uh, deleted and the resource will become available. IARM will detect that the GPU resource, which is even more efficient for this AIF than FPGA, is now available. It will trigger the migration similar to before, and MEO will replace the AIF. Again, the client after the, the container is deployed, as before, will continue requesting the image segmentation AIF without any disruption.
This time we will see that the warm up server requests present 33 milliseconds latency on average, which is 23 times faster than the initial deployment. Finally, the client uh, will finish, uh, the GPU version gets deleted, and the second demo comes to an end. Uh, to conclude, in AI at edge, we verified the seamless uh, use of heterogeneous resources over the abstraction of the container orchestrator, including streamlined development, deployment, runtime management, and monitoring. We achieved one order of magnitude acceleration with Projects Connect Compute Platform, we have integrated various components such as MEO, IARM, AF descriptor, achieving interoperability of heterogeneous geo-distributed resources. We have built the AI edge software infrastructure in, in a way that removes the burden of resource provisioning from the user by automating the placement and migration processes. Also, we gave automated we, we automated the generation of deployment ready AIFs that constitute the project's catalog with full compatibility with AF descriptors, MEO, and IR. Finally, for takeaways, we have explored the trade-off between increased initialization time of hardware accelerated AIFs and the reduced warm-up execution time. We have developed several variants to cover both optimization goals, which allows us to deploy each time the one that better suits the user's needs. Finally, we have also observed that Kubernetes network visualization and containerization induce overhead that, we, that while it is negligible for cloud, it could be critical for latency sensitive edge applications. Thank you very much.